want it all for a fraction of what you pay elsewhere, you gotta go to Ross. Tonight, breaking news, President Trump's personal physician under fire. The president picking him to run the VA, but tonight, allegations of misconduct against the president's nominee, Ronnie Jackson. What he's accused of doing, we have new reporting. Also breaking tonight, the deadly van attack, and now the discovery, what we've learned about the man accused of running down pedestrians with a van. The deadly attack at the Waffle House, and tonight, the stunning find inside the suspect's home. Federal authorities say they took away his weapons before, but what they've now discovered. There is word coming in tonight on former President George H.W. Bush in the hospital just days after he said goodbye to his beloved Barbara. What we've now learned. Up close and personal at the White House today, the president and the dandruff moment. What he said to French President Emmanuel Macron, their exchange on Iran, and the president earlier calling Kim Jong-un honorable. The wife and mother sucked out of that plane, pulled back in, but not surviving. Tonight, her husband sitting down with our Martha Raddatz. And we do have breaking news, word coming in right now, reports of officers shot in Dallas. Details on the active scene at this hour. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Tuesday night. And we begin tonight with the breaking news from Dallas. The Dallas Police Department confirming a short time ago that two police officers and one civilian have been shot at a Home Depot. Police say a major incident underway, and the department tweeting moments ago that those officers have been critically wounded, adding, please pray for our families. Let's get right to ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas following late developments from Washington. Pierre? David, it's an extremely dangerous situation. As you said, two officers critically shot, and we also are being told that a civilian has been injured. And our station WFAA is reporting that this is an ongoing and very dangerous situation. David, as far as we know, the Home Depot was heavily crowded with people in that store. Law enforcement officials are responding. We're being told that the ATF is responding to the scene as well. Again, more details will be coming in, David. A very dangerous situation. Two officers critically shot, civilian injured in an ongoing situation at a Home Depot in North Dallas. All right, Pierre Thomas, you'll stay on this throughout the newscast. Pierre, thank you. And now to the other developing story as we come on tonight. Major new scrutiny for President Trump's personal physician who became his nominee for Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Ronnie Jackson, the current White House doctor, was set to be questioned tomorrow. Tonight, that's now been put on hold. Amid serious allegations tonight, what he's accused of, and there is word coming in late today that the president has now met with him, and the president telling him he will fight for him. Here's ABC's Mary Bruce. Dogged by allegations of professional misconduct, tonight the president's pick to lead the VA is under intense scrutiny. Admiral, is there any truth to these allegations? Thank will you withdraw your nomination? Admiral Ronnie Jackson's confirmation hearing now on hold. As the Senate reviews allegations, he created a hostile work environment and as White House physician improperly dispensed medication, specifically the sleep aid Ambien. The top Democrat on the committee says Jackson's also accused of being repeatedly drunk while on duty when traveling with the president, though he didn't provide any evidence. Excuse on Capitol me. Hill today, Excuse Jackson me. insisted he's Thank eager you. to answer the committee's questions. I'm looking forward to uh, rescheduling the hearing and uh, getting the process moving. Thank Just you. moments later, the president asked what Thank he knows. Well, I haven't heard of the particular allegations, but I will tell you he's one of the finest people that I have met. I would definitely stand behind him. He's a fine man. The president blamed partisan politics, but then added this nudge, suggesting why bother moving forward? I wouldn't do it. What does he need it for? To be abused by a bunch of politicians? I really don't think personally he should do it, but it's totally his. I would stand behind him. Totally his decision. Even before these new allegations, there were questions about whether Jackson, the president's personal physician, is up to the task of leading the government's second largest agency. I know there's an experience problem. But the president and Jackson have hit it off. Just three months ago, Jackson offered this glowing review of Trump's health. I told the president that if he had a healthier diet over the last uh, 20 years, he might live to be 200 years old. I don't know. I mean, uh, he, uh, he, has incredible, uh, he has incredible genes. Even then, Jackson discussed prescribing sleep aids for long trips. I recommend that everyone on the plane uh, take a sleep aid at certain times. Tonight, even some Republicans say they need more time to review Jackson's nomination. I think the, the 
proper thing to do is not to reach any conclusions. But critics say the White House failed to do its due diligence. And it is really frustrating to me that this administration continues to not vet or sloppily send over a nominee that leaves us having to really vet them and look at serious questions. So the White House failed to properly vet him? Apparently, yes. So let's get to Mary Bruce. She's live on the Hill again tonight for us. And Mary, you're learning that Ronnie Jackson met with President Trump late today in the Oval Office. What have you heard? Yes, he did, David. And the White House tells us today that despite what the president said today publicly, tonight the president is planning to fight back. A senior official tells me that Jackson is getting railroaded and that his record is impeccable. David, the White House says that Jackson has a clean bill of health here and that he has no plans to withdraw his nomination. David. Mary Bruce following the developments on the Hill. Mary, thank you. We turn next year to that deadly van attack in Toronto. The driver appearing to intentionally strike victims on the sidewalks and the streets there. The crime scene nearly a mile and a half long. And tonight, what investigators are now learning about the driver's possible motive. ABC's chief national correspondent, Tom Yamas, in Toronto again tonight. The chilling new video, a van turned into a killing machine, barreling down the Toronto sidewalk, plowing into pedestrians. And tonight, as investigators scour the scene, a troubling portrait emerging of the man behind the wheel, 25-year-old Alec Manassian. The accused is alleged to have posted a cryptic message on Facebook minutes before he began driving the rented van. That message, including these words, all hail supreme, gentleman Elliot Roger. Roger killed six people in a 2014 rampage near Santa Barbara. He recorded selfie videos lashing out at women. Can you at least say if the suspect was frustrated with his relationships with women? Uh, again, because that's part of the evidence, that's going to be part of our investigation. But police say the injured victims were predominantly women, ranging from their 20s to their 80s. Vassiola Baboli almost so became quick. one of them herself. You were walking on the street and your friend literally had to pull you out of the way of the van? I just remember just being pulled away into the direction and then he accelerated and hit the lady and all I can envision is that vivid image of the lady being on top of his hood and then being thrown to the ground and then he ran over her as he plowed to, to the crowd. Manassian now charged with 10 counts of murder and 13 counts of attempted murder. Was your son what would you like Outside court, your his father emotional. Picture? He didn't say much, but the look on his face said it all. You were crying in court, sir. Can you at least tell us what you're feeling right now, please? Watch your back. Watch your back. Sorry. And tonight, we're learning more about the traffic officer who stopped the rampage, Constable Kenny Lamb. During that standoff, Manassian saying he had a gun and making threatening gestures. But Constable Lamb, a 12-year veteran of the police force, managed to bring Manassian down and cuff him without firing a single shot. And Tom Yamas with us again tonight from Toronto. And Tom, you were in court today when the suspect was charged, and you're learning he did a short stint in the Canadian military? That's right, David. We've just learned tonight that Manassian was in the Canadian military last year for only six days during troop recruitment training, but then he quit. Today, we did see him in court. He walked in with a white jail jumpsuit, sat there stone-faced, but the only emotion in that entire courtroom came from his father. I saw him wiping away tears as his son was led away. David? Tom Yamas with us again tonight. Thank you, Tom. And there are also new developments tonight. After the deadly shooting spree at a Waffle House in Tennessee, tonight, suspect Travis Rain King is in custody, facing four murder counts now, a judge revoking his $2 million bail. Federal authorities said they had taken away his weapons before, but tonight, a search warrant now revealing a powerful arsenal inside his home. More than a thousand rounds of ammunition, a rifle, two scopes, and a laptop that may have been wiped clean. The suspect's father now under federal investigation amid questions about whether he broke the law by giving guns, possibly back to his son. Next to the White House tonight, in several moments up close and personal today, making immediate headlines around the globe, President Trump and the President of France and their interactions. The Trump administration's first state visit, the official welcome at the White House, with a 21-gun salute and full military display. The two presidents and what they said today about Iran, what President Trump said about Kim Jong-un, calling him honorable. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. As soon as the French president and his wife arrived at the White House this morning, the Macrons and the Trumps seemed determined to show the world how much they like each other. So comfortable together, that this happened. We do have a very special relationship. In fact, I'll get that little piece of dandruff for... <laughs> we have to make him perfect. He is perfect. 
Chumminess aside, President Macron came with an agenda. He wants the U.S. to stay in the Iran nuclear deal. Are you willing to consider staying in the Iran deal? But we're going to be talking about it. We'll see. For all its flaws, the Iran deal has shut down, at least for now, the Iranian nuclear program. But the Iranians say they'll restart their nuclear program if the deal is... We'll find is out. Finished. You'll find out about that. Are you concerned about that? It won't be that? so easy for them to restart. Mr. President, are you... They're not going to be restarting anything. They restart it, they're going to have big problems, bigger than they've ever had before. Later at a joint press conference that featured another over-the-top handshake, Macron urged the president to stay in the Iran nuclear deal while negotiating another deal to limit Iran's missile program and support for terrorism. We raised very, very new issues and very new solutions together. Trump didn't show his cards, but he did repeat his warning to Iran. I will say, uh, if Iran threatens us in any way, they will pay a price like few countries have ever paid. The president's harsh words for Iran stood in stark contrast to his praise for North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un. Over the past year, he's called Kim a madman running a cruel regime. But today, looking ahead to their planned meeting... Kim Jong-un, was uh, he really has been uh, very open and I think very honorable from everything we're seeing. Nice words aside, the president declared he will insist on complete denuclearization. It means they get rid of their nukes. Very simple. They get rid of their nukes. So let's get to John Carl with us live tonight at the White House. Big night at the White House, John, this evening. We saw all that warmth on display between President Trump and Emmanuel Macron, the two first couples walking together on the White House lawn. Tonight, President Trump is hosting them at his first state dinner. And it's going to be an intimate dinner, just 13 tables of 10, candlelit. They'll be eating on the Clinton China, David. And the guests who we, we have seen already arrive here tonight so far include Henry Kissinger, Rupert Murdoch, two Olympic gold medalists, and also Apple CEO Tim Cook, who brought as his guest the former Obama EPA director, Lisa Jackson. Always very interesting. John, stick with us here. One other headline from the White House we want to report on tonight. The president's personal attorney, as you know, Michael Cohen, under increasing scrutiny, his home office raided by the FBI. The New York Times had speculated Cohen could flip. A source close to Cohen telling ABC News that will never happen. But let's get back to John because John asked, would the president consider a pardon? Here's what the president said today. M Mr. President, what about Michael Cohen? Are, are, are you considering a pardon Thank you from very Michael much. Cohen? No? Stupid question. Stupid question, John. The president clearly not happy with your question there. Not happy, David, and not answering. But the question of a possible pardon for Michael C Cohen is a central one here right now. And the White House has not ruled it out. Just to David. be clear, he said it was stupid, not me. Thank you, John, as always. <laughs> you got it. We turn next to the economy and to the stock markets. The nice stock's down for a fifth day in a row. The Dow at one point losing 600 points before closing down 424 points. Investors on edge today over possible inflation, rising interest rates, and those gas prices inching up will continue to follow it. We turn next here to former President George H.W. Bush in the hospital tonight, just days after saying farewell to his beloved Barbara. ABC's Matt Gutman from Houston with what we've learned tonight. The president falling ill barely a day after his wife Barbara's funeral. That infection spreading to his blood, what's called sepsis, can be fatal. On Friday, the elder President Bush gamely greeting hundreds of mourners. The next day, the 41st president wheeled down the aisle towards his wife's waiting casket by the 43rd president, his son, George W. Bush. Even taking this picture with three other presidents. His other son, Jeb, describing his parents' undying love. He held my mom's hand all day long yesterday, and I called him, and he said, I'm kind of a crybaby cry baby right now, not feeling very good. A Parkinson's-type disease has kept the president bound to a wheelchair, but that didn't stop him from skydiving on his 90th birthday. Rewarded yeah. with this peck on the lips from his worried wife. Though full of vitality, famously throwing out first pitches at baseball games, the elder Bush was twice admitted to the hospital for pneumonia last year, always cared for by his wife, Barbara. And so let's get to Matt Gutman. He's with us live from Houston tonight outside the Methodist Hospital there. And, and Matt, obviously so many tonight talking about that marriage of 73 years and the impact her loss could be having on his health as well. 
It could be a huge impact, David. Now, we spoke to President Bush's representatives tonight. They say that he is responding to this aggressive treatment to that sepsis by his doctors, but there is one ailment they simply cannot treat. That is the so-called...